Hi, welcome to State Space Modeling with Tim. In the previous video, we worked on an example very much similar to the one you're seeing on the screen right now. It's literally the same circuit, but we use state variables um, v2 and its derivative v2 dot. In this example we're going to be working on today, we're going to be using v2, but also I, I of t, that's the current across the circuit. So we're still working on the same RLC circuit. The reason we are doing this is to show that we can choose different state variables to get different state space models. And just because it's different doesn't mean it's wrong. You can have multiple state space models to analyze or design your circuit using state using different state variables. And without wasting time, let's get on with the program and solve this problem using our three-step program. Okay, so Again, we're going to go with the red pen. Step one. So like I said, it's the same circuit. We just have to go through the same maths again. So step one, we're going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law because this is a series circuit. We're going to try, we're just going to say the input voltage is equal to the voltage of the resistance multiplied by the voltage or added with the voltage of the inductance added with the voltage of the capacitance. Okay, and then in the previous video, we pointed out that um, this was VC, this was VL, and this was VR. And one thing of note is that, um, what was it? VC is equals to V2, and VL is equals to LDI dt. And I think we said I is equals to C dv2 dt. So that's something we can take from there instead of having to derive this stuff all over again. Okay, so we are now developing our solution. So we're going to say v1, again, which is still our input, is equals to I r plus... Uh, VL is going to be L di dt plus V2, which we will not change because of this. Okay, so now we said I of t and V2 of uh, V2 of t are going to be our state are going to be our state model are going to be our state variables. So you'll notice right now that this circuit. This um, differential equation already has our state variables in line. So we are pretty much set up to solve our problem. So we can now move on to the next part, which is going to be step two. Now step two says we need to select our uh, state variables, but we have them selected so we can just point them out. So we can say let x1 be the current i of t, which would imply that um, x dot one is gonna be equals to di dt. Okay, and I think we can already see that the IDT exists up there in this equation. And we can point it out that the IDT is actually VL over, um, over L. I don't know if that's going to have any particular importance. VL over L. That's worth noting, I guess, for the time being. And then X2 is equals to V2. And we can point out again that V2 dot or X2 dot is equals to, and I'm just trying to see this one, V2 dot is equals to, oh yes, it's equals to I of T over C because we are getting it from this expression over here, that is going to be V2 dot. So this is I of T over C, and I of T is X1. So we can say X1 over C. So we already have those two expressions. And what is our output? Our output is V2. So Y is equals to V2. 
which is just equals to x2 because if we look at our circuit here v2 is the voltage that's being measured as as the output of our circuit which is the voltage across the capacitor or the potential difference and then we can still say again our input is equals to v1 because that's the input voltage going into the series circuit okay so now this one is coming across as a very simple set to solve okay so here i think this will not be sufficient we're going to have to find a proper expression for this one and but that's going to be done in step three sorry about that okay so now we can write our expression here i guess i can call it one and we want to write our expression one in terms of our uh, variables that we've defined in step two so we're going to say u is equals to i which is x1 multiplied by r plus l and the idt is just x1 dot plus v2 and what is v2 that's x2 so what we want to do is we want to rearrange this equation so that x1 dot is um, the subject of our equation so we're just going to do this x1 is equals to minus x1 r minus x2 and should put that in brackets minus u 1 over L. Feel as if we are forgetting something here. No, hopefully not. I don't think, I, I don't suspect we are. No, we're not forgetting anything. Okay, so this one has been properly expressed. This is our x1, and now we just have to express our x2 dot. x1 dot has been expressed, and we have to express our x2 dot, which is just going to be equals to x1 over c. Over c. So we can just say 1 over C multiplied by X1. Okay. And again, we can express our Y, which is just X2. Okay. So now we can write this in canonical form. And I don't think I have to write it. I have to point out the canonical uh, equations anymore. I think we all should know what they are what they look at they look like now okay so x1 dot x2 dot so this looks something like this x1 dot is gonna be minus r minus r over l sorry and that's gonna be minus 1 over l okay and that's going to be at the bottom we're going to have x2 dot which is going to be 1 over c that's going to be 0 that's going to be x1 that's going to be x2 plus Oh, I made a mistake here. I had a feeling something was wrong. That one, this should have been, this should have stayed positive. Sorry about that. And that's going to be, this goes for x1 dot. It's going to be 1 over L. And this is going to be 0. And that's going to be U. And the output is going to be 0, 1. And that's going to be Y, so that's going to be X2. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. It quite possibly means the same thing. And just like that, we have solved our state space model. Okay, so here's one thing before I finish off this video. We would like to compare it with the previous solution or the previous state space model. And immediately you can see, and I'm just going to scroll up now, 
it look they look nothing the same. It's the same circuit, but use, using different state variables, the solutions, um, the state space models are not the same, and this is not wrong. Both can still describe your system fully. They can describe how your system behaves over a specific periods of time uh, under the, for the changing parameters, but they just don't look the same. And that's completely fine. So this is the message I wanted to get across. Um, different state variables will give you different state space models. And that's completely fine. In the next video, I'm going to do another mechanical problem, but it's going to be a bit more advanced than the first one I did. And that's going to be the last um, example I do for the first lesson. And then after the, after the example, I'm going to move on to discuss how to, how to convert um, transfer functions from the frequency domain into uh, a state space model. Until then, take care.